So this is my new boiler I had custom made right here. I designed this myself and I sent it away to a stainless steel uh, shop and they produced it for me and I'm very uh, happy with it. So the first thing we'll notice here is a big black pipe coming out the side. Um, that is an insulated pipe and that is where the steam's going to come out there. You know, kind of looks good, doesn't it? So the steam's going to um, flow out the end here and all you do is you plug that into your um, female connection which is on the steam tank I have outside. If we turn it around this way, now this is the action end here. So if you look down here, that there is an element which is mounted um, on one of these one and a half inch tri-clamps. You can mount one element or you can mount two elements. That there is a 2500 watt element, that's a 4500 watt Dernord element. So if you put these both in, you can take that cap off and you slot that in, you can run 7000 watts through this. Or if you get two of those, you can run 9000 watts. Two of those, 5000 watts. One of those, 2500 watts. So the choices really are uh, not quite endless. You've got, you know, half a dozen to a dozen different combinations of these elements you can use to get a different power output from this. Through our wall, we only have 10, am 10 amps at 240 volt, so it means we can only use about 2500 watts worth of element. So I'm just using the one right now. Now, if we turn it around to the other end without dropping it off the table, you'll see that there's a hole there. That's actually a ball valve. We can take the cap off, and inside there, there's a ball float valve, um, which people commonly use, and that keeps the water level about yay high there. This cap I've made here for it, that's just, a, that's just another stainless plate. And I really love making gaskets out of silicon, and so I've just ran a silicon um, bead around there, and you just lie that plate on there gently, um, and then once that's set, you take it off, and you've got a really nice gasket. So what I do is I put that on, and then to get a seal around here when pressure starts building up, I just put a really heavy weight. I've got a 25 kilo round um, bumper plate to put on for now, but I've got a kettlebell coming, and the kettlebell is like a 20 kilo kettlebell, if you know what they are, and that'll just be lifted up and sat on top. Um, and that so if pressure does accidentally start building up, it can actually release the pressure out here. To insulate this, I'm just going to use the old PIR board, which I love, which is really insulative and has a really good uh, thermal resistant property, so it doesn't really melt when it gets up to about 100 degrees. And I've made this flat for the purpose that you can just get the PIR board and just have big flat sheets of insulation all around it, because the key with running a good boiler, I think, is insulation. The better it's insulated, the more thermal efficient it is, the more steam you can get out of your pipe and get into your sterilization vessel. The legs are just round pipe and I made them reasonably small because um, heat will want to conduct down and out the leg. So I've made them small to prevent as much heat as possible from conducting out that way. We want to basically keep all the heat inside here. So the only way for that heat to escape that the element's producing is through the end of our steam pipe. So I've got the old man coming around to help insulate it. So we'll get it insulated and we'll get it running and we'll just see how well it performs. The insulation job isn't that great and that's because I had to get my father to do it. And um, boomers, they may not be very good at uh, insulating custom made boilers, but they are exceptionally good at destroying the local housing market. Really just blowing the value of land out of the water. So um, yeah, yeah, that's good. This is only temporary. Once my arm's better, I'm going to rip all this insulation off and, um, and put it on there a lot better. We've currently got a 25 kilo weight on the top. Now that sits atop of the block of insulation, which sits on that plate, and that holds that plate down perfectly, and we get no um, steam leakage from around there. And of course, the reason for having the weight there is if pressure does build up in there, it will actually be, actually be able to lift that weight up. This was a new ball cock I got for it, but I haven't used that because it was a bit late in arriving. I actually used my old one. Um, but that, this, that's the type it's designed for there, the ones with the kink in it. That one actually raises slightly higher than my other one. So if it does intrude on the top, you just need to bend this little arm here slightly down. But we'll get this running now, and we'll see just what the output was. If we remember the output from my old boiler, we're getting something like 58, uh, sorry, 48 grams per minute, I think it was. Yeah, 48 grams per minute of steam coming out of the boiler, which I think equaled 2.88 litres an hour. So I'm going to get this fired up now. We're going to take a look at the steam coming out. We're going to shove it in the, uh, the cold water bath on a scale again. 
and we'll take a reading to see how much steam is coming out of this new boiler in one minute. So we have just turned that on and I will actually measure our time to heat up as well on my phone here. So I'll see how long that takes to um, heat up, start boiling and start um, pumping out steam out here. So it's just starting to fire up now and that took pretty much bang on 30 minutes. So there we have it starting there. You can see the steam coming out of it. I'm just going to let it run for a few minutes and work out some of this water. If I leave the hose on after I turn it off, this uh, float valve in there actually leaks a little bit and so it's overfilled it somewhat and so I think that's why that water's dripping out there. It's just uh, boiling a bit close to the um, to the hose. So I'll let all that come out because we don't want that interfering with our reading. I've also, I've also got these parts here which I haven't yet stuck in. That's the water um, safety valve. Not the water safety valve, that's the water level um, uh, switch there. So that's going to be mounted on the inside and that there is the um, temperature switch which opens once it hits 110 degrees. These are two safety devices. I won't be able to put these on to my arms uh, better. It's just too difficult. It's too difficult to instruct other people on how to do it. So. so I've got our container set up here which we'll measure it in. I've actually got ice in it this time. And the reason is for, I've tested this once with this boiler here and we've put a litre in there and when you put the hose in it actually heated up the water so much that it was letting steam escape because the water got very very hot, too hot to touch. So I want to keep that water colder for longer so it's going to condense that steam more. And I'm going to hold this pipe in. And we hold it here for one minute. And there we have it, that's 1057, so we'll put on 57 grams. That's 9 grams more than our last boiler. So after all that's done, and we've measured the output of our new boiler, what does that leave us with? Well we're getting 57 grams per minute, which is 3.42 litres of water as steam per hour. Now if we convert that to kilojoules, it gives us 9,152 kilojoules of energy. We do have to minus some of the energy that's already in the water as it goes in, that small amount of heat that's in there. So if we take that away, we're left with 8,865 kilojoules. 8,865 kilojoules per hour coming from our new boiler. Is that better than our last one? Absolutely. It's actually 18% better. That means simply by building this new boiler and constructing it the way I have, I've found an 18% efficiency. That means 18% more steam coming out that pipe, 18% more steam is going into this tank. Now these things aren't exactly energy efficient. It's got an element in there, it's just straight converting electricity into heat. And I think when you find an 18% efficiency gain, you know, it's really worth it. I'm really happy with this, with this boiler. I'm not too sure how it will go when we put more elements in, with the weight on top, you might even need to add more weight to it. It's, it's really strong though. I mean, it, that 25 kilo sits on there nicely. I will have uh, the plans for this boiler available uh, in a link below or on my Open Sport website, the New Zealand website. Um, they'll be available for digital download, probably for a small fee. Um, so if you are looking at getting a boiler, instead of just buying the, the round stainless steel barrels, um, which can be a little inefficient just due to the volume and the, how much you have to insulate. Um, you can have a go at making one of these and just take those plans down to a stainless steel fabricator and they'll make it for you. And I think it works a treat.